Hey you guys, it's Trisha. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be bringing you my spoiler-free review for The Glass Spare by Lauren DiStefano. The Glass Spare was the Owl Crate book of the month for November and it was the book club pick for Hannah and Gabby's book club the Muggle Studies book club that pick for the month of December. For the Muggle Studies book club, they just started it recently. Hannah from The Rainy Reader and Gabby from Gab's About Books. I will link the Goodreads group down below so you can check it out. And the discussion for this one, Hannah and Gabby will be doing a live show discussion where everyone can tune in and chat on December 30th. I think that is 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 8 p.m. Central Time, if I'm not mistaken. I will also um, link Hannah's and Gabby's channels down below so you can check them out. So I just finished reading this the other day, so we will get right on into my review. The Glass Spare is about Will, short for Wilhelmina, who is a young princess that is born as a spare heir to the throne. She has three older brothers, and so being last in line to inherit the throne, she is kept hidden away from the public and is never seen in the public's eye, and never really ventures outside of the castle except for when her father, the king, needs her to operate as a spy in the city nearby. One day, Will discovers that she has a deadly power. Whenever she touches something that is living, it turns into gemstones, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and because of this, she is banished from the kingdom. Upon leaving the kingdom, she goes in search of a cure, and while she's out on her hunt for someone who can help cure her, she runs into a young man who is intent upon using her valuable touch to his own advantages. The story goes on from there, and, you know, it's a little bit of a wild ride for Wilhelmina as she tries to figure out how to control or how to get rid of her gemstone touch. So first I want to talk about the world building in this one. Um, for this one, it was quite interesting because it had kind of a steampunk vibe to the story. When I picked it up, I didn't really know, there was nothing really to lead me to believe that that it was going to be steampunk. I've never really experienced steampunk before. And so I was going in thinking this was going to be, you know, maybe medieval or have some sort of not modern day or not even Victorian steampunk. I wasn't expecting that. And so it was really neat to get little touches of that throughout. However, the descriptions on this were not as abundant as I would have liked. It was pretty sparse with the world building descriptions as far as, you know, what's going on around them or the consistency of how we see the world, the way Will sees the world and um, what is present in their world. So it was, it was very sparse in that. And because of how sparse the world building descriptions were, I noticed that I had a hard time visualizing their world. I'm one of those readers that I, when I read specifically in fantasy for something some, like this, I like to visualize in my head as if I'm watching a movie. There will be times where something will come to me and I'll just know. I'll know visually what it's going to look like. And so I didn't get that with this book because I bounced in my visualizations. At some points I had very Pirates of the Caribbean-esque vibes. Other points I imagined things very similarly to Game of Thrones um, in like King's Landing. And so it was, it was difficult for me to land on something that was consistent. Um, so I liked that it was, it was steampunk-esque but it was it was something that I felt needed some work. I would have liked a little bit more 
from the world building. Also with the world building, um, it seemed like um, there's a little bit of travel in this book and they travel from place to place occasionally. And I felt like the places were really close together. I think that that was something that kind of baffled me is that it only took a couple of days for them to get from one place to another. And at the beginning, uh, uh, through a major portion of the book, I was thinking that they were like on an entire like globe or world of their own, you know, not Earth. And so it was really interesting to realize that they were able to traverse from one major kingdom to another major kingdom over the course of several days. So that was just a really interesting component um, that I would have liked to have seen fleshed out just a little bit more. Now I want to talk about the characters. For Will, I quite liked her. Uh, I really liked how spunky she was and how very independent and headstrong and she had a wanderer's soul. I really enjoyed that about her. Um, but other than that, other than that and her love for her brother, um, her brother that is um, closest to her in age, they had, they had a great relationship. I absolutely loved Will and Gertie's relationship and I loved Gertie. He was one of my favorite characters in the book. Other than that, as far as Will's character though, I felt kind of middle of the road about her. Um, I understood where she was coming from for a lot of things, but I feel like because her father's her her father's character wasn't as developed as I would have liked. It led me to not quite understand some of the things about her um, or did I didn't feel as strongly about her as I would have liked. I didn't connect with her as deeply. Um, I still enjoyed her as a character, but not as much as I find myself enjoying other characters. As far as Will's father, I felt like it was a little bit of a hard pill to swallow where we were supposed to just accept that he had become power hungry because he was a king. Like there, the, the, the reasoning for the way that he was, he wasn't a very nice king. And the reasoning as to why wasn't really there. And therefore, the way that he treated Will didn't fully sit completely with me. It wasn't, it wasn't a complete base for the way that he treated her or the reason he wanted to expand his kingdoms. It just seemed like he was, he was greedy and, and drunk on power and wanted to expand. And so that wasn't quite enough for me. I wanted just a little bit more. I feel like we'll probably get more in the second book because this book does set up to have a sequel. So I feel like some of the characters were pretty well developed. Some of them were middle of the road. They needed a little bit more. And then some of them fell a little bit flat for me. Gertie wasn't quite as developed as I would have liked, but I did really enjoy him as a character. And Will herself was a character that I think needed just a little bit more, just for my own personal tastes. Now for the plot. Overall, it was a pretty simple plot and um, there wasn't a lot of twists and turns to it. Despite the simplicity of the plot on this, I felt like there were some unnecessary scenes. Um, there were a couple of things that I just, I didn't think added to the plot. I didn't think added to the characterization. I felt like it could have been, you know, with what that scene was trying to get across, I felt like it could have been included somewhere else in the book, um, in a shorter section. And if that scene had been removed, we could have been given a slightly longer, more in-depth scene somewhere else. Something else could have been, um, elaborated more on. Um, so there were just a couple of those that I felt were just a little unnecessary. I did really enjoy the way the end of this book did set up for the second book. As Will has been with the young man who wants to use her gemstone powers, um, Loom, his name is Loom, um, as she was with him throughout the, um, the a good chunk of the book, I 
really liked the dynamic that was set up for their relationship. Um, I didn't feel like it was too much insta-lovey. I mean, like, their relationship progressed pretty quickly, but I guess that's because of the way the timeline of the story was set out. We didn't have a definite timeline of how long of a period this book takes place over. I think it was about a month, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but I really liked the way that their relationship was left at the end of the book and the way that it's set up for book two. I'm not going to tell you any more than that because I don't want to give any spoilers for the end of this one. Um, but it was quite enjoyable and I am looking forward to reading book two on this one. I did end up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars solely because I felt like I didn't connect with it as fully as I would have liked to and there were some components that I think needed a little bit of work. Overall, it was enjoyable and I know that there are people out there who are going to enjoy this much more than I did. Not to say that I disliked this. I did not dislike this in any way, shape, or form. I just didn't like it as much as I had wanted to, as much as my gut was telling me that I should have. I know that there are people out here, out there that I can definitely recommend this for, so I'm really excited for that. And I am excited to see how the world develops and how some of the other side characters in this story develop over the course of this series for however many books it may be. All right, you guys, that is it for my spoiler-free review of The Glass Spare by Lauren DeStefano. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read this book, if you got it in the Owl Crate, what did you think of it? And also, are you going to be joining us for the Muggle Studies book club discussion for this book on December 30th? We would love to have you. Please visit the Goodreads group so that you can join in in the discussions. And if you are interested in seeing more reviews from me or other videos from me in the future, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!